Alright, we are back with another Dragon's Dogma 2 video. Uh, I know I'm a little late, but uh, better late than never, right? So uh, yeah, but today we're checking out Welcome to Dragon's Dogma 2, presented by Ian McShane. So uh, yeah, let's jump right into it and let's see what they have for us. Rated M. A world touched by magic. A symphony of myth and reality. An everlasting saga of hearts set ablaze. Could you imagine if he like narrated Lend in game? A moment, and I'll that, tell that would be pretty awesome. Story of a Look at the world. visuals. Part one, the hero. For untold eons, a dragon has a dragon. Its ominous shadow looms over the lands, a dreadful creature of chaos and awe, with tales of its cruelty. I want, I want if the dragon still has like the same backstory as it had in the uh, Dragon's Dogma 1. No mortal would dare to dream of challenging the dragon in single combat, yet... The Arisen. Who must. Oh, that's such a good... In a legendary tale doomed to repeat across the ages, Roy Orlik. The dragon chooses a worthy champion from each generation. Takes their heart. Wrenching the beating heart from their chest and forging a being known as the Arisen. The Arisen! This hero, marked by fate and burdened by their lost humanity, must rise from the trap oh, of ordinary dope. life. And oh, I can't wait. Take up arms in search of the dragon who stole their heart. Their armor but is the sick. The path of the arisen is not a solitary journey, for they are granted access to the rift. The rift the stone. Connecting worlds. Okay, so it seems like. All right, so it seems like the way uh, pawn summons work, they're probably going to work the exact same way. You can just go to the the Riftstone and go in and look for certain pawns that you want. Where they can summon mystical beings from parallel realities. The loyal and hard-working pawns. Masters of archery. Man, I... Yo, the archer looks so sick. The arts of sword play and melee. The pawns become the Arisen's companions and confidants. I hope you slept well, Master. As they go forth on their journey together. Part two, two nations. In pursuit of the beckoning dragon, the Arisen and their pawns set foot across two nations as disparate in terrain as they are in their Look ways of life. In Vermont. A fertile land cradled by alpine peaks like, look and rolling at this. hills. The fortress city stands as a bastion oh, of prosperity man, and this. security. Cascading waterfalls and serpent. Like, I wonder how much is like actually able to be like roamed feeding around. Into fruitful farms where a feeling of abundance permeates the fresh air. Just above the capital city, Vern with Palace rises. Has anyone said, or have they, has Capcom said anything about, like, how long, like, taking the, uh, I guess, taking the bison ride? How long that takes to get to different areas? Feeding fruitful farms where a feeling of abundance permeates the fresh air. Just above the capital city, Vernworth Palace rises proudly. You are approaching the gates of Vernworth. Here, Vernworth. the Arisen is traditionally revered as the sovereign, a monarch. Crowned by destiny and looked upon as a champion. And it's like the fake arisen Protecting thing. The land he from the dragons oh, stage. yeah, he's like the fake arisen. Beyond Vermin's verdant embrace lies Batal, the nation of Beastron, a land of unforgiving death. Beastron are the cat people, its right? Shifting sands and jagged canyons require creative thinking to traverse. With gondolas connecting precarious outposts. Look Here, at that. The Arisen is not an esteemed sovereign, but an outsider. Their pawn companions believe to be a source of grave misfortune. Patal's rulers are not of human lineage, but rather beastron priestesses who worship the lambent flame. 
For the Beastron, believe its sacred fires shield them from the calamity of the dragon. Meanwhile, outside the reaches of human and Beastron, oh, the elven? <laughs> hidden within the depths of the forest, the elven the nation of elves resides in seclusion, speaking in a tongue known only to them and avoiding contact with other races. On their journey, the Arisen will navigate through conflicts between species and the complexities of culture, faith, and history in each land. The choices the Arisen makes will oh, that was not dope. only their future, and that of those with whom they interact. You know what? Sorcerer and, uh, what is Mage? Itself. They actually look pretty broken. They actually look pretty good. Part 3, The Monsters. The Arisen's Odyssey is fraught right, with so we got the good old Cyclops. For the world is home not only to humans, oh, that Beastron, was but to all manner of monsters. Hungering to defeat Eww. the hero and their pawns. <laughs> Each step of the way is marked with blood and sweat shed. But what is that? Oh, is that the little lizard? lizard? The harrowing oh, okay, of okay. that's cool. That's cool. I'm assuming that's a thief. Resourceful goblins lurk in the shadows, skillfully adapting to the terrain and waiting to ambush in groups. Oh, man. The footsteps of lumbering golems, animated by powerful charms, shake the earth and rattle the Arisen's bones. And when are the there, sun sets... Are there different, like, I don't know if this has been said... But are there different like uh vocation levels have they said anything about that so i know in the first one you can rank up like your vocation obviously i know you can rank up your uh your person but i wonder if there's like a set amount of like vocation rank that you have to rank up or that you can rank up and i wonder if it'll continuously like scale and allow you to get stronger and stronger per uh vocation level up what we get we can expect a busy night. Skeletons. Skeletons. Ghosts, an undead rise from their slumber. Oh, that was cool. A single undead, murmuring to itself adrift in memories of its living past, is a haunting sight. I'm but assuming fire undead, is another like, uh, good thing a against undead. nocturnal frenzy is a truly nightmarish test of metal. And the mightiest foes are monsters most only see in myths. I think the warrior is going to be really good. The if you can know how to use it. Hooves. The thief is the probably going to be insane. Petrifying gaze. And the oh, what is this? Ghastly severed head what is that? Will strike fear in even the most stout hearted. And with every exhilarating encounter, the hero must think creatively. It will take cleverness, as well as courage, to conquer the three heads of the Chimera. Slay the soaring griffin. The griffin. And overpower the bronze giant, Talos. Talos. I'm assuming you gotta Each victory break all the uh, things in his the chest, all the purple and things. prepares them for the inevitable showdown with the indomitable dragon. The culmination of both their destinies. Welcome to Dragon's Dogma. Dragon's Dogma. Two. Oh, I can't wait. We are less than a week away, ladies and gentlemen. Less than a week away. Less than a week away. Literally. I thir I think Thursday, right? Well, YouTubers and stuff will probably have it up by like Tuesday, Wednesday. But Thursday night, we will be able to adventure on into Dragon's Dogma 2. If you're not already, don't forget to like and subscribe. We're more than likely probably going to stream Dragon's Dogma 2 here on YouTube, on my channel. So. You, you should like and subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know whenever I go live or whenever the next video goes out. And if you can't catch the live stream, I will 
post like an actual video itself of i guess each day honestly i may just continue playing until i uh i don't know i don't know <laughs> i guess until i need to eat or sleep or do something i probably won't ever get off the game but who who knows who knows but i'll be here don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button turn notification bells on and uh yeah i'll see you all in the next one peace